So today I have a high street bought chicken wing and we're going to take a look at some of the anatomy of the wing, how it compares to a human so we can relate to it and also some of the articulation. So I'm interested in uh, how some of the, the folding of the wing happens. So first of all we're going to look at the underside of the wing. Um, up here we have the shoulder. Um, the upper arm extends down to the elbow, which is down in this point. The forearm is essentially this mass here, which goes all the way up to the wrist and into the hand. So, so far we can see that straight away this relates to a human. There are some differences. The hand is essentially fused. There's three fingers that are all fused into one mass still has a thumb, so the thumb is called the alula on a bird and in this case you can still see the uh, claw on the, the tip so I think that's a defensive mechanism that they've maintained. Um, on the upper arm, bicep controls the, the pulling in of the wing, tricep controls the extension of the wing so, and then the forearm has some muscles that control some of the details of the, the feather movement and around by the hand. So one thing to note straight away is a bird has a mechanism of making the wing slightly lighter by when the wing extends you can see I'm, I'm just changing the angle of the forearm here so this is controlled by the bicep and the tricep but you can see that the wing tip is extending so the hand and the wrist are flexing this makes the wing lighter for flight so it means that there's there's not a lot of muscles required and if the wing is outstretched like this the the rigidity of the wing is a lot stronger because it doesn't have to it's basically an automatic connection rather than a muscle controlled connection so there's a lot of rigidity here which means that flight can take place without tiring the bird we're going to see along this back edge here there's some skin um, and the skin actually has some ridges along it and we can see that this is where the feathers on the primaries so the primaries extend away from the tip of the hand so this this is much smaller than the actual wing size the wing is extended by the feathers so the primaries attached to the bone at the back of the hand here and are controlled by their angles are controlled by this skin at the back here. Secondaries attach to, so we've got the radius at the front here, we've got the ulna at the back and the all of the feathers of the, these are the secondaries. So the secondaries essentially again for flight, for lift, primaries are for propulsion but the secondaries end up protecting the primary feathers when the wing is folded closed. These primaries, you can actually see from the way that the skin folds here, the primaries go behind the mass of the, the secondaries. We can see also that there's a lot more ridges up here where more feathers come from. So these are the coverts. The coverts are the ones that form a nice smooth surface on the wing. And we've got this area of skin that stretches across the front. So the elbow is right down here. So the, the bones go in this V formation, but this area of skin helps form the surface of the wing. So it helps form the airfoil. And so that is called the uh, patagium. I think it's called the patagium. And uh, so animals such as bats have this that form the actual wing surface. But in a bird, you've got the, the Propotasium, which is from in front of the shoulder here across to the wrist is the main surface of the wing and you can see the the feathers that come from this section you can see all the bulges and that is the the marginal coverts so anyway we're going to turn the wing over and we're going to take a quick look at how it folds so i'm going to hold the shoulder tight we can already see that the wing is folding so it's pointing the wing tip is pointing towards us as we open up 
the wingtip goes perpendicular to us. So we're pointing at us perpendicular. We're going to see not a huge amount of play in this elbow. It's pretty rigid, which means that actually there might be a there might be a, a slight spiral groove to the elbow, similar to in a human. In a human, as you extend your elbow, it twists out slightly, and that's called the carry angle or the carriage angle for kind of make fun of holding a bag, a shopping bag, the bag is held away from the body slightly. You can see a bend in the forearm as it goes away. So I'm guessing that as this folds away, it stretches slightly more parallel. But as it comes across, we're coming across folding up tight. So on a bird, you're probably looking at that kind of angle to the body. And as it stretches out, it stretches flat. So I'm going to hold it in its flat position. And we can come across. And we're probably going to droop the shoulder slightly to do so. But stretch out and across. And this forms the shape around, if it's curled, around the body. And the secondaries protect the primaries. And the tertiaries are actually going to be off this back edge and just going to tuck into the body slightly.